told you. But if you want to skip the video, and if you want to know if Claymore is good, go ahead and drop whatever anime you're watching and watch Claymore, okay? Bye. I couldn't quite figure out why I felt so disconnected from anime the past few months. I would throw a show on and zone out for like 12 minutes before realizing I was just staring at a screen with cartoon characters walking around. It was starting to bother me. Then it finally made some sense recently. Rekka, you gotta get back to your roots. Easy to digest, action-packed series that are just entertaining from top to bottom. Not all the extra stuff. An aura that snatches you up and draws you into the setting with likable, relatable characters and a solid pace to the story that allows you to navigate through the show in a way that is tolerable. So then I started scanning over my collection and stumbled on this. And I was immediately drawn to pop it in. It's been over six years since I've seen it! <laughs> Claymore has had a reputation for many years being the spiritual 2000 successor to and the female version of Berserk. This certainly does carry that aura. But I also want to throw in there that there's a lot that would make it a predecessor to Attack on Titan as well. There's been a lot of controversy over the years about its ending and whatnot, but this video isn't about any of that. We're talking strictly about the overall experience of these 26 episodes. Welcome to the fictional medieval hell, and say hello to Claire. Hi, Claire. Claire is a claymore. Well, not exactly. You're a Claymore, right? No. What? Claymore is the name we were given. Given by you people. Claymores are a half-breed of human and Yoma. This is a Yoma. These Claymores are hired by the full-breed humans on times, on an assignment in various areas to kill Yoma. You would assume, ah, okay. You got an OP female lead with a big ass sword going around, slaying monsters with a weak annoying kid following her. I've seen it a hundred times, Rekka. So what? Gotta understand, it's so much more than that. It's rare for me to find an anime with a plot progression worth praising in the same regard as the accessory components like art, animation, and fights. It starts off getting you familiar with our protagonist and the kid she moves around with and what kind of world that they're living in. After that, they drop you into a few episodes on Claire's backstory, and that lets the viewer in on why her personality is so strong and cold. It also sets you up for the ultimate climax at the end of the series. Claire was a normal little girl initially, who spoke and had a lot of range of emotion. I guess like a human being? Until events that were covered in the third to fifth episode of the series completely changed her. And after that flashback, the stove temperature knob only goes up in degrees. The more you watch Claymore and think you have the dynamics figured out, the more information you learn and you realize that you don't know much. Man, watch out. You're not being aggressive enough. So you start off believing that Claire is so OP and that she's this female guts and everything. Until you get about halfway into the series and learn about the single digit ranking claymores and the awakened beings. So I gotta dedicate a minute or two here to fanboy on the action in this anime. The Yoma battles were just so engaging to me in ways that I really can't comprehend. Because I'm not one to be easily coerced by the lore of shonen action. But Claymore came differently. Each fight felt like I was watching a cinematic battle in a movie theater and had a meaning that most times would create advancement in the plot. A lot of it has to do with the creativity aspect because Claire and the other Claymores use a variety of ways beyond wielding them big-ass blades to slay these monsters. Every time there's a major fight, it tries to push these characters' powers a little bit further past the threshold in terms of them tapping into their Yoma energy, which keeps you on edge because you know that at any point they can go to a point of no return and turn full Yoma. And unfortunately, sometimes people do end up down that road and lose their lives in this series. It just is what it is and it makes each fight more worthwhile to watch because you never know what's the outcome.
Moving on to the technicals, Claymore benefits from coming out back in 2007, which would mean that it came out about 7 years into the digital revolution. This means that before anime would later become completely digitized as we see today, there was a mini era that perfected a hybrid between sketches and digital animation, but it wasn't long before digital would pretty much eclipse everything. It really started in the early 2000s. But if we keep it real, it hadn't been polished at that point. All I'm trying to say is that the production just looks incredible. It was well drawn, well animated, well detailed, well colored. I felt like I was transported into the world every time I turned this on. Matter of fact, let's check out who did this. Oh duh, it's Madhouse. Musically, the score was insane. There's so much genre bending here. There's a mix of classical, orchestral, punk, and jazz music. And every theme off of the OST fits the mood from the battles to the simple character interactions. My only gripes with the series are... There's a bit of dullness transitioning from the middle, like coming into the last quarter. Before and after that though. Before and after that though, the entire show is just gold. Another thing... I felt like the connection between Claire and that boy, and this is something that should tell you because I didn't even care to look, even remember what this kid's fucking name is, but um, the connection between Claire and this dude was not very convincing and you know it left a lot to be desired from that relationship. I know they wanted him to represent a younger Claire at times because of uh, things that happened to her and you gotta watch the anime to know what I mean, but I don't know, it, it didn't work for me. What else? Uh, oh yeah. Why the hell does every short hair Claymore look like Claire? It got hard to decipher at one point who was who at times, but no worries. You'll pick up on that when you memorize what Claire's symbol on her neck looked like. They all have a unique one. Man, it's a shame that there wasn't more in animation for this series. The whole premise of the show was enticing. The concept of the Claymore and how they're on borrowed time before becoming full Yoma. And the whole black card thing, the molasses level aging, not being able to eat too much, the explanation for why there's a lack of claymores, the world building. Move, move out the way, move. It sucks, you know what I mean? In hindsight, you could tell that they took a chance with this one. For whatever reason, it was chance because it took about six years into the manga's production in order for Claymore to see an animation. And it's been 15 years and still no sequel. If you've seen the series, you know that it's in dire need of a sequel. Anyway, whoever needs to see this, we need and we want more Claymore. Like the video, comment down below what y'all want to see next. I'm out. Thanks for watching Anime Back When.